You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. Welcome to the WBT. This is Mike Lodge. Thanks for joining me. I tell you, I've spent a good portion of the morning listening to the members of Congress setting up the impeachment rules as they debate this in Congress. And I've listened to a whole bunch of people who are totally, totally upset. They are emotionally drained, they are politically drained, they are physically drained because of what's going on in this impeachment process. They see a a nation that is literally under attack by corrupt, corrupt political members of Congress. People who made things up who have deliberately lied to the Americans. And the biggest problem that I see, and I talk to people all the time, I said, listen, turn off the bloggers, turn off the TV, turn off the commentary by political analysts on TV, turn it all off. Because you are going to get so much information That sounds like everybody's going to jail, but it's all just assumptions. Filled with nonsense, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. So Americans have got caught up in this never-ending attack from everywhere, from the internet, from, from television and radio and talk, talk, talk radio and I literally was listening to this one individual and I listen to her regularly because she really does you can tell the passion in her voice and that she really does care and she she has probably every time that she goes live on Facebook she has about 800 to 900 people that watch her and she goes on routinely throughout the day but just a few minutes ago, I was watching her, and she was truly upset. Because she has gotten to the point where she doesn't know if she believes the Republicans anymore. Because so much promises are coming out. Tom Fenton is coming out nonstop on Twitter and Facebook and every place else with all of these grandiose assumptions and arguments and everything else. <clears throat> and it is driving these people out there Literally not. That's why two years ago I said, you know what, I'm I'm turning Fox News off. I'm turning off I'm turning off CNN. I'm turning off all of the news agencies. I'm no longer going to follow bloggers. If I see a blogger, I'm no longer going to quote it. I'm not going. I'm just going to get rid of all this nonsense that that comes at us from every direction and every side, upwards and downwards. And she finally said. Her name is Deplorable Deb, if you ever watch her on Facebook. She finally said, I'm no longer going to listen to anybody else. I'm just going to listen to the president. Because she is bombarded all day long by messages and emails and everything else, trying to give her all of this proof of all this ugliness and and, and corrupt political the things going on she gets bombarded she says I can't take it any longer so if you listen to these individuals you will see that Americans are exhausted they have come to the point where they said this political attacks the political lies sneakiness, corrupt 
corruptness coming out of the Democrats just is enough. I tell you, even personally myself, because there's so much going on, and I'm beginning to wonder, is the president being set up even by his own party once it gets over to the Senate? Now, I've got to have a little bit of faith and say, okay, I hope that's not happening. But personally, I don't trust anybody anymore. So we have this feeling, we have this anger, we have this this mental anguish that is hitting us every single day where people's health are beginning to suffer because of this nonsense that, that is coming out of the United States Congress. Today they're sitting there and they're, they're debating all of this, these rehash, a rehash of, of nonsense that we saw in the in the two hearings. It's rehash and rehash some more. Just so they can decide on how to debate it on the congressional floor by all, all sides. And who's going to lead the arguments? Are they going to split it up? Are they going to split the two charges up? And then you have Schumer on the other side of the Senate saying, we need to bring in these three witnesses. When the Democrats on the congressional side had every ability to do so through a legal process in the United States courts. Now, if the president defied the courts, then that would have been an obstruction. But right now they have no obstruction. Because there is executive uh, uh, executive privilege. So we've got to get to a point where America, if we if we don't make some changes in Congress, we're going to be living through this for the rest of our lives. <clears throat> we are going to be living through this every single day that the Democrats have control of Congress. We have... In fact, the Democrats have said we're going to continue on. If it goes to the Senate and the Senate clears the president, we're going to continue on with our impeachment. And they say this is a solemn occasion. Prayerfully. Where was this solemn occasion where Maxine Waters was out in public every single day demanding impeachment, yelling for impeachment, telling fellow Americans to attack other fellow Americans who were in support of of Trump, telling fellow Americans to attack people who were in the administration of President Trump. And people were doing it. They were literally, physically attacking these people, following them into restaurants, following them into meetings. And they were being attacked. Maxine Waters told the American people, impeach this president and attack fellow Americans. How solemn is that? It's not freaking solemn at all. This is a process that has been planned for the last three years. After the, after the president said, I do solemnly swear... The Democrats said, we're going to impeach this president. So this has been a planning stage for a long time. And now they've gotten to the point where we're one year away from elections, and this is when they strike with vengeance. And Nancy Pelosi is responsible for bringing harm to this nation. But we as Americans, we've got to calm down just a little bit. We've got to put our anger to the side and maybe do some meditation. I don't care what you have to do. Spend some time with your grandchildren. Go volunteer some time at a senior citizen center. Do something positive to get rid of all of this negativeness and all of this hate that is coming from our politicians out of Washington, D.C., and also in some of our districts. Now, we have some individuals who have already declared 
of these 31 politicians in swing districts have already come out swinging and said, we are going to vote for impeachment because they don't care about your vote. They put the president in office in their districts, but they don't care because this is a political fight for them. It is not a moral fight. It is not an ethical fight. So we have the Democrats right now trying to decide how are they going to argue this because members of the Senate, the Democrat members of the Senate are saying, whoa, wait a second. You have a very weak case. How do we even argue a weak case like that? You have no evidence. You have nothing. All that you have is a political whim that you don't like this guy and you want him impeached. So the Democrats are saying in the Senate, whoa, wait a second. Back up. You better come to the Senate with something. Now there's some rumors that I hear. No, I'm not going to even talk about rumors because it's nonsense. What we need to do as Americans, we need to pull back, take a deep breath, contact all of the members of Congress, pound on them constantly every single day, do not let up. When they vote for that yes vote, that is your signal that that individual needs to be removed. I did a vlog this morning. I said, listen, if anybody has a D by their name who's a politician, vote them out of office. Any individual who votes yes on impeachment, vote them out of office because that's the only way that we can clean house. Otherwise, this thing is going to go on and on forever. American people are going to be frustrated forever. And we have a president that's doing his job. That is creating a good economy for you and me. You have to also think about his foreign policy initiatives. There's been no missiles flown over Japan. There's been no nuclear testing out of North Korea. We have a trade agreement ready to go and sign to be signed between Canada and Mexico. We have another one that's going to be signed with China. And yet the Democrats want to continue to destroy the president that people put in office because they don't like him. We Americans have an opportunity to, uh, opportunity here to clean the Congressional House. And it's time that we took this initiative and we move forward on it and let these individuals know that if they vote yes, then they're out immediately. We can't have this inundation of political theory being pushed on us every single day from bloggers and commentary people on on internet on the internet and also on on Fox and CNN and MSNBC and everything else. Americans were exhausted. We are exhausted of this nonsense. You'd be surprised how many people you catch checking their Twitter accounts to see what was said in the last few seconds. Who's making what argument? I would even suggest that if you are, if you have guts enough, and I just started doing it myself, of making vlogs and saying, listen, Americans, we've got to take back the Congress, and this is how we do it. All it has to do is be 45 seconds, 50 seconds. Take it out of your heart and put it into a vlog and let your fellow Americans know how you stand. 
inundate the Twitter accounts, inundate the Facebook accounts, Instagram accounts. Get your voice heard out there that says, Congressman, we're enough is enough. We're exhausted. We want you to do your job and stop this impeachment. That's all that we ask because we are Americans are exhausted. We see that our roads are still the same with potholes and everything else. We still see that people are coming across the border. It's slowed down, but we need to do better at it. We see that the immigration status of DACA has never been satisfied. The discussion still is out there. And as you notice, if you've listened, Democrats have lost talking about it. But still we got these people sitting there wondering, wanting to know what's happening. And if you are a DACA person, I hope that you have learned that the Democrats don't care. They do not care anything but your status is because you are a political pawn for them. And I've said this so many times. Nothing will ever happen on immigration reform because the Democrats... Don't want it to. It is a political play for them every single time they run. It's the ability to attack the president. When there are 2,000 children put in, um, in, in, in the, in the uh, uh, prison down at the borders because they came across with no one, with fake families. So they're sitting there trying to reunite their families. They can't be out, let out into the general public. So the Democrats use those children at the border, but and they t- totally forget about the 700,000 homeless American children that live on the streets and in cars in this country of ours per a study of the University of Chicago. They don't care about Americans. They care about political points that they can use against the president or against the Republican or an independent that's running. We have a big-time problem, Americans. We've got to do better at this. We need to take back this country. Because we are at a point where Americans have political fatigue. They have impeachment fatigue. They're worn out. And we are the only people who can make a change. We're the only people with our vote that can make a change and get these people out. Now, if you look politically at this impeachment process... It was a very streamlined, very quick impeachment, right? I would call it a fast-track impeachment process. Do they not realize that if Clinton decided to run for president and Joe Biden is running for president, Clinton has all those email issues and illegal things that she has done with her Clinton Foundation. And then Joe Biden now has this issue with Ukraine in her in in his son. If any one of those two were to become president, they could they would be immediately sent for impeachment on day 1, and they have there is legal foundations to do so. So those two individuals can't even run, really run for office. They just can't do it. The other thing I wanted to say, the Senate is going to hear this case, but there are several of those senators who are running for President of the United States. Their vote, should they should not even be able to vote. Because it is not ethical. You can't vote against someone that you're running against. 
and vote for them to be impeached to better your chances. Think about that very closely. They should withdraw from voting. That's the way it should be, ethically. So all this morning I've been listening to all of this nonsense coming coming from all different directions. And I've been listening to people who are fed up and they're tired and they're emotionally drained and politically politically drained. And I felt I had to come on and do this podcast because I, I, I want you to know out there that you're not the only one that feels this way. You're not the only one that mistrusts the government at the moment. The majority of Americans feel the same way. You're not the only one that feels that this impeachment process is unethically, is unethical. Corrupt. A sham. There are millions of Americans that feel the same way right there with you. You're not the only one who is politically drained because all of us are that way. But realize, you and I, we have the opportunity to change the Congress in 2020. And it has to be done. Because we don't want to live this impeachment process over and over and over again. What we want as Americans is to get the United States Congress back to work on the issues of America and not about the political nonsense that they want to dream up just for the sake of their own power. It's at the point now that there's so much hate and so much division in this great country of ours that it's only up to us to be able to change it. We see this happening in the UK where they're fed up with this liberalism. They're fed up with these weird things that destroy, that, that destroy a democracy, that destroy the freedoms. We have the same thing happening right now in America where Americans are fed up with the government trying to control everything that we do on the federal level and on the state level. So the conservatives came in the conservatives came in and they won by a huge majority. Because liberals failed at keeping the ability of British people, when they voted for Brexit, when they voted to get out of the European Union, and then the liberals coming in and trying to stop them because they believe in this big world order where they all need to be together. The British people had enough. And so that's why you saw such an overwhelming support of the Conservative Party in Britain. We can do a lot with Britain because we as Americans, we feel the same way. We feel that our government has become intrusive on every aspect of our lives from developing our health care, telling us who we can have health care with. So, Americans... We love our country. We all can agree on that. We all love our independence. We all love the freedoms that this country provides through the Constitution of the United States. But we don't like 
an unethical attack, or what I call a coup, to take over the presidency through impeachment. We've all seen the ugliness of this whole thing, and we are fed up. Listen, if you guys need to talk, if you want to send me a comment, send it to 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. It's up to us. You and I, we're in it together. Let's take back our Congress and our country. We can do it. We have the ability to do it. We as the American people have the love for this country that we will do it. I'll talk with you soon. This is Mike Lodge. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast is produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.